hello everybody. Uh, I'm Evan Abrams, uh, your host here on Motion Design Hotline, joined, as usual, by our other host, the host who will be doing all of the important stuff today. And uh, Kyle, you do all the important stuff all the time. But, yeah, uh, usually. Yeah. Which <laughs> might make me the host with the least? Most. That's the thing. Yep. <laughs> That's right, the host with the least. Um, Kyle Hamrick. <laughs> How you doing, Kyle? Spectacular. Okay. Better than you, it sounds like. Yeah, well, it's been a long day of talking for Evan, so (laughs) I'm going to be backseating this one because, Kyle, you you have brought to us all the way from Adobe Max, uh, you brought some of of your leftovers. Yeah. Um, Going to double dip today. (laughs) Well, I hope people out there find this uh, uh, to be a spicy dip as we uh, get into the many, many layers uh, that, uh, that, I don't know, we're, I guess... Kyle, I don't, I, I'm trying to torturing the metaphor because we have like a new type of layer that's coming coming to us. It's like discovering a new type of bean or uh, a type of cheese to add into our seven layer dip. But anyway, before we're too far down the road, I want to say hi to everybody in the chat. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, so, uh, Alessandra, oh, hey, hello. Look. It's Alex Hogue. How about that? Oh, hey. What a coincidence. <laughs> That's right. Alex, a lot of this will seem very familiar to you as you, uh, as you were the <laughs> number two of that one. And also, hey, Kevin, what's going on? Kevin Monahan hanging out in the chat here. So. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Co. Co, hello. Lots, lots of familiar names. Wade, Penny. Um, of course, someone has bailed out to go watch AE 101. But hey, that's totally fine. <laughs> Do what you like. We, we're kind of like, what would you say? This is like After Effects 501 or something. We're Yeah, pretty, yeah. Well, you know, level. sometimes we cover everything in between too yeah um it depends on the day <laughs> we're a, it, it's a it's a veritable uh uh i don't know a melange of of things that we're gonna be getting into kyle i might as well show people on my screen uh what specifically project you have brought here so yeah this, yeah uh, so wh- why don't we play it for them and then maybe we could loop it and i'll sort of talk over it you know mute it after that so that's true so here we go Presumably there's audio happening. If not, uh, imagine a spicy salsa beat here. I hope so. Um, I mean, I see bars in the thing, so, you know. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, I just checked. It's there. Okay. So, yes, Guaculus presents yeah. Salsa Simulator. So I'll bring you- I guess Guaculus would be the system on which you play this monstrosity. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so uh, I was doing an Adobe Live from the floor at Max with Alex, who's here in the chat. Um, <clears throat> and if you are interested in seeing uh, that, because it's kind of more on this uh, same topic, um, I'm going to drop that link into the chat here. Um, but uh, basically, you know, I was kind of just like, well, I uh, I need something that kind of you know tackles a, a variety of technical check boxes that uh, that I want to do. And I like to create something that's more of a cohesive project than just sort of doing, you know, a couple little random disconnected examples. So I was like, well, what can I do to incorporate the 3D objects uh, in After Effects, some uh, Rotobrush, because we got a new revised version of Rotobrush recently. Um, plus there was, uh, you know, some requests for just kind of like animating a design. Um, so I was like, well, let's dive into Adobe stock and see what we can come up with. And I found all this ridiculous footage of people wearing, um, these VR headsets, which viewers of the show might recall our, uh, corn episode, <laughs> right? The infamous corn episode, <laughs> um, reminded me because Evan had found a clip there of some guy wearing a VR headset and, you know, doing this, there's a ton of these clips where people are doing this kind of you know, minority report stuff, groping the air in front of them um, with these headsets on. And um, I think it looks um, pretty silly to say it nicely. So I kind of just leaned into that as a concept. Um, And uh, around the time I was harvesting a lot of my uh, tomatoes and peppers from my garden and making a lot of salsa. So that was in my head. Uh, So that's, I don't know, that's how my brain works apparently. Um, (laughs) uh, also, uh, in terms of like the 
3D objects that can be found pretty readily on Adobe Stock. Mm. Food is a big part of that, which is why I've done a lot of food-based things for these little projects. Yeah. So like here, um, I've got the, you know, we're on the part where we've got some tomato slices uh -huh. and stuff. Like a lot of these chop, chop-ed. Limes, um, peppers, onions, garlic cloves. Right. And so all of this, all of these elements they're all inside of After Effects. Like these are 3D yes. layers that, that are taking place, you know, Absolutely. in there. So that's that's part of our, I don't know, big, the new, that's the new layer to add to your dip. So you got, you got beans. And to be cheese. clear, uh, right now that's still only available in the After Effects beta, but that yeah. is available to you right now. You can be doing this, uh, you know, while I speak at this very moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if you so desire, just open that up and enjoy uh, enjoy having a bunch of tortilla chips uh, flying mm -hmm. around people here. Um, so yeah, where should we start first, Kyle? Where should we uh, begin our journey uh, into well, mystery here? Yeah, um, well, I would, uh, I think I'll take, even though I kind of covered this on the stream with Alex, I'll do just a little bit um, of a, a broad overview of kind of the workflow of the project. Um, okay. But then I'd love to dive into some of this 3D stuff. But, um, you know, we'd love to hear from you folks that are watching what you would like us to dive into. Um, I know Evan's gonna, you know, try to provoke some interesting stuff out of me here, um, but I'm just gonna go wherever the the winds take me today. So um, if you have a specific part you'd like us to dive into, then uh, please say so. Um, I will point out that uh, this this tortilla chip right here in this, uh, you know, virtual dip scene, um, this is a custom modeled tortilla chip. Um, uh, using some of the substance apps. So if you would like to see that, I think that's one of the things that we're going to do today. Um, yeah. We can kind of go, you know, start to finish on making a 3D model, adding a texture, bringing it into After Effects, and then working with it. Yeah, and so if people are wondering, the type of 3D thing that you can bring in, OBJs, GLBs, Mm -hmm. G GFLBs, GFLBs, I think? Maybe. GLB is what I've been using uh, primarily because I've kind of... Um, from what I've found, that is sort of the best all-around format to be using with this. GLB is newer, and it uh, it holds the model info and the texture info um, all in one package. So, well, it's very lean. It's a very lean yeah. <laughs> file format. I think OBJs are a little bit bulkier uh, in terms of you know their size. They're not maybe not as efficient. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Let's uh, let's jump into the uh, into the thing. Let's see where we're going. Okay. Well, um, so just to kind of, uh, you know, show you how I worked, you know, I kind of explained where the concept came from. Um, and just to kind of lay this out, I started off, you know, very simply in Premiere, um, just working with these clips. And of course, you know, some of these, I maybe had to try out a few different clips to kind of figure out what worked. Um, that is a nice thing. When you're building stuff from a stock site, you can download, I probably downloaded, you know, five times as much as I needed. And then whittled it down until I had all the, just the right stuff and the people who looked, you know, just the silliest, uh, you know, fondling the air uh, in front of their faces. Um, so uh, you can see here, I just very simply like, you know, uh, added these little text uh, pieces on screen. These are just placeholders just to kind of like confirm for me where things needed to be happening and what the timing was along with the music track down here. Um, so then as I went further, um, you can see some of these are, uh, this is actually, uh, most of the type graphics are Mogurts, motion graphics mm -hmm. templates, um, because a lot of them are pretty similar here. So like grow it, um, chop it, uh, dip it, wherever that went. Um, <laughs> Flip those it, are all just, it, twist it. Yeah, <laughs> those, those are all uh, Mogurts uh, so that I didn't have to kind of keep one-offing each of those. And then some of the special case um, graphics, like the multiplayer modes here. These people having a salsa party in the office. Um, you know that that ended up uh, being kind of a special one-off, but it's still uh, dynamic linked, so um, I could kind of work with this and be flexible as I was refining things. Um, and then you know finally I just came to the more refined timeline where I kind of locked everything in and and just uh, fine-tuned all of it. I will call out, there is one little cameo here. This is my hand and my actual tomatoes in my garden. Ooh. So, yeah, yeah. Bespoke tomatoes. <laughs> now we're talking. So, yeah. um, 
And I guess if, if we were truly inclined, we could, we could break out one of the various 3D object scanning apps and, and scan some tomatoes. Like there's a lot of ways to get OBJ and GLB geometry. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. absolutely. However, I just looked to see um, how much I could get off of Adobe stock, uh, which was everything you needed for this shot. <laughs> um, there was a whole tomato, a half tomato, a quarter tomato, half lime, a quarter lime, you know, you get the idea. Um, and then here, uh, if, if you've been watching a couple of these, uh, shows where we've done other 3d stuff, um, I've done a lot of this, just making things into kind of these ring arrays, uh, and then having them rotate a bit. And again, we can totally take a look at this, but a lot of this is like, uh, in my mind, it's pretty easy to pull off. And it's a pretty good way to really show, like, look at that tomato there. Like, yep, that's definitely a 3d object. Like right. you can, you can see it is in fact rotating those garlic cloves are kind of spinning, you know, you get to see all the sides of them. So it kind of helps reinforce what the, what the technical concept is here. Yeah. Anytime you get something tumbling on multiple axes, yep. it's like, Oh, <laughs> Oh man, that's the price just went up a lot. That's a very three dimensional object. <laughs> so there are times for subtlety and then times where you want to really drive home, <laughs> you know, a certain technical point, uh, which is now. So um, if you want to check out this shot, we absolutely can. Um, I, I do think there's a little bit of weird pre-comping I did just to make it a little easier to work with. But mm -hmm. um, and then this uh, we'll, we'll totally go into this bit because of the custom chip and all that. Yeah. So uh, I'm probably going to close down Premiere to kind of save some resources unless anyone has any questions about this part. Um, I mean, I mostly asked in the chat what they think those seven multiplayer modes would be. Uh, this is a yeah, suggestion by Penny. for I, a I definitely of... don't have an answer for that. <laughs> Penny is suggesting there would be a kind of chip duel. So a kind of Ooh. the first person to actually break. Yep. That, that feels like a nice, um, like push your luck type of... Uh, <laughs> Of yeah, how, how much salsa can you can you load up on there before the structural integrity gives out? Yeah, you're really balancing the sogginess of the chip versus its actual <laughs> integrity. Um, yes, there's so many so many things to to deal with. So, Kyle, where are we where are we going next with this? All right, well, let me go ahead and close down Premiere. Um, so let's see, I've got that, and I do have After Effects open, so we can certainly showcase um, you know this shot from the beginning, if we want to play with the roto brush, for example. I, th um, I think or... so, because you're, okay. you're combining, you're combining roto brushing, you're combining solving, and then, and then, and then the actual chip insertion. Yep. Itself. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that then. So the idea here is that some of the chips, um, are going behind her, right? So we need to cut her out from the background so that you can get that. Um, and in this case, like, honestly, there's only a couple chips that go behind her. I probably could have just sort of masked those one off really quickly, maybe. Um, but Rotobrush is fast and good, <laughs> especially on human beings, because that's what it is designed for. Um, so let's go ahead and just see how it does here. Um, now, when you're working with Rotobrush, uh, you need to kind of double click your clip. Oops. Um, and so it's going to open up in its own layer viewer here, which is different from your composition viewer. Okay. Just mm. kind of point that out. In this case, I only have the one layer in the composition, so it looks the same. And then you're going to come up here to this little, uh, paintbrush with a person. And then really all you have to do, let me go ahead and make sure that's at the beginning of my clip. You just have to kind of paint in the shape that you want. Okay. You don't need to paint around the edges or anything. <laughs> and you'll see um, if you can see it, hopefully, on the stream here. It's got this pink outline around here, and it did pretty well. Um, there's a couple spots where uh, here it went onto the couch a little bit. This clip is actually a little tricky because you have a couch that's pretty close to the color of her shirt, and this, uh, you know, right here, that's pretty close. This uh, wall outside is pretty close. So there's a few places that I had to touch a lot. Um, but even with all of that, it did a good job here. So if you need to remove something, you can just hold down your Alt or Option key and just kind of brush over that. See how it just took it away. I'm going to try and catch her hair here, and that does a pretty good job. And then I need to grab her shoulder and her arm out onto this little controller thing. Boop. 
and then kind of trim this back away. I'm not going to be too precious with this right now um, because we're on stream, you know, hopefully you kind of get the idea. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's very exciting to see yeah. someone roto. We know that <laughs> yeah. this is true. Yeah. <laughs> um, and honestly, uh, you know, you, you get the outline once you're happy with it, then you start moving forward. Um, so you could do that frame by frame if you want, or if you're feeling really saucy, you could just hit space bar and see how well it does. Yeah, just um, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I happen to know what's going to happen. Um, this does a really good job, but there's one or two things that catch it a bit. Um, fix that real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and just frame by frame this and kind of let it um, solve here. And uh, you'll see it's moving right along with her. So Roto Brush, uh, particularly the new version here, version three, um, is trained really well on human beings and specifically to do stuff like when arms cross in front of each other or cross in front of body parts. Uh, it's much smarter about that than some of the old versions. It's also much faster than it used yeah. to be. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. I mean, it's um, that just the, uh, the like arms and legs, like a person walking in profile mm -hmm. is uh, yeah. drastically improved. So just uh, maybe some things... You know, while you're propagating that, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, like some best practices, maybe if you're using Rotobrush. Uh -huh. you know, like, sure. like the prevailing wisdom is to take like big, big general strokes uh, on stuff, basically, um, and not be too finicky in details, mm -hmm. you know, off the jump, or else you're going to get really into the weeds. And honestly, we can let the refine edge tool do a lot of. Exactly. Those other parts, you know, as long as your first big brushes are capturing the thing and they're propagating and the boundaries mm -hmm. look pretty good, you know, it is, it's a, it's all a game of being good enough, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this too, like this clip is a great example um, because of where the things actually end up crossing. Like, honestly, I don't need to care too much about this bottom part of her because nothing mm. crosses behind it. Um, I mean, I'm getting it as part of doing this, but, um, you know, sometimes you only need to be careful about the parts that things are actually going to cross behind. Um, so like right here, I'm going to do it right for the purposes of the demonstration, but it honestly doesn't matter for the actual project. Right. Uh, but like right here, there's a lamp behind her that's very close to the color of her hair. <laughs> and so if I let this keep going, it thinks that's part of her head now. But if I come yeah. to this first frame where that's kind of starting to poke out, that's where you kind of want to catch this so that it doesn't keep thinking that's part of her body, right? Yeah. And then you can go and see it realizes, oh, yeah, that's some different thing. This is also a time to thoroughly admonish the set deck person for putting a lamp behind this person's head. Uh, these yeah, are... yeah, not ideal. This, it, just, just a heads up. If you are filming anyone ever, and they are standing directly in front of a lamp. Please move the lamp. Yeah, move do, something. <laughs> do not do not allow objects to bisect people or seem to grow out of their heads. Um, you'll notice that yeah. Kyle and I do a great job of this. I have a plant to one side and a bunch of pillows to the other. And now often I'm speared through the head by this frog I mean, back there that I should yeah, definitely Yeah, I, I do have a guitar that lives behind me. Kind of depends yeah. on the day. Um, so the, the most crucial thing, once you're happy with your rotor brush here. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll do the hair real quick. I'm not going to actually propagate that. But let's say that we weren't super happy with this hair. Let's maybe kind of come back to a little earlier here. Um, again, this one's fine. But if we do need to, you can use the refine edge tool up here. And this is specifically for doing things like hair or fur. And then you could brush around those edges. Mm. And this will give extra attention to these parts. White is what it's keeping. Black is what it's getting rid of. And you can see there is a little bit of like hair fuzziness there. Maybe I would, you know, up here it's against white. So it's really not going to matter. But um, if this were something where we needed to be very careful about making sure this hair was cut off cleanly from the background, um, then this refine edge tool is exactly what you're going to want to use for that. Yeah, um, and, and so, hair is another way, is another thing in Rotobrush 3. I think it does a way better job of yes, of not absolutely. chattering and becoming incredibly insane uh, in, <laughs> in hair. Chatter being when the, when the edge just kind of goes like this frame by frame. Because yeah. remember, we're not just cutting this out once. We're cutting it out 
24 or th or 30 times every single second that this clip is on screen. So yeah. you need it to be a good cutout, but it also needs to be consistent as the thing moves across the screen. Yeah. Okay. So we get, we got the thing. We're happy yep. with this. Uh, we're freezing it down. Yeah. That is the most crucial thing. You have this little freeze button down here. And if you don't click this, it's always going to keep thinking about this. Mm. So you need to make sure that you freeze what you've done. And then it will take that and kind of lock all this down so that it's not continuing to think about the roto that you've told it to do. It's going to bake that down and you can, you can unfreeze this again if you need to edit it. But this kind of tells it like, you know, just leave this where it is and uh, don't, don't think about it anymore. Yeah. Um, and, you know, critically, this is, this is the time when you are, you're putting that dip into the oven so that uh, all of the things will congeal nicely into each mm -hmm, other. Mm -hmm. You can make, we can make refinements, right? You can, you can absolutely mess with the refine edge stuff after this, but yeah, we get the big, the big stuff is in there. Yeah. So let's, I'll come back over to this composition here and you can see her cut out just against black here, but um, we do still have access to all of this over here where we can refine how much feathering we have, the contrast. You can shift the edge if it's uh, a little too tight or a little too, uh, you know, loose, you can kind of push it in or out. Um, and there's a chatter reduction right here. And then you've got a, a lot of those tools again for the refine edge as well. Um, and so basically the way that you work in most cases here, um, looks like I, okay, good. I do have some of this going on already, um, is that you might rename this clip cutout and then duplicate it and then call the other one, maybe say plate or background or whatever. And on that one, you would turn the rotor brush back off. Right. And so you're like, well, you just undid everything. Well, yes, except now I can put stuff in between her and whatever is uh, her background, right? Mm. So you've got her cleanly cut out and you can do whatever you need to, like put these uh, beautiful, beautiful graphics between her and the background. Yeah, so people are wondering, this is when you, you put down that base layer of, of tortilla chips, and then you're putting different things on top of the nachos, <laughs> and then this is the final layer of chips that go on the top of that, creating a kind of <laughs> cementing. So, you know, you've got your, your, your stuffing layer in the middle, and then you're, you're sandwiching between the two uh, copies of tortillas. Uh, that uh, Evan is with. very into this dip metaphor. It's pretty critical to have consistency <laughs> throughout the program. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, honestly, this right here is the basis of, you know, all, any cutout work that you're doing is basically this. Um, you, you cut out the aspects of the thing that you need separated enough so that you can pass something behind it. Because again, like I said, um, you know, you could spend uh, a, a bunch of hours making sure that this is super perfect everywhere. But if you only have one thing that's kind of going behind this part of her, Honestly, you know, get this part kind of good enough in the ballpark or maybe don't worry about it at all because you don't have anything down there. So don't spend a bunch of time worrying about parts that you don't need to do. Um, this is a good reason to kind of mock this stuff up before you do work like rotoscoping. And that's why you want to make sure that your edit is as locked as possible before you do things like rotoscoping and tracking because they can be time consuming to get them to look right. And you don't want to do that and realize that you did twice as much as you actually need for your edit <laughs> or that you did a section and then you actually want two more seconds of it. And now you have to come back in here and try to like match all that again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No good. It's got to be just right. So yeah, I'm, I'm really curious about the, I mean, 3d solving, right? That's a, yep. that's a couple of buttons to do, but getting the stuff to like realistically respect this cutout in 3d space is the, uh -huh. uh, that's the boggle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a, of a boggle here. Um, and honestly, I think I just did it with layering. We'll dig into that in a second. Um, Ooh, I will show you just because you're... Oh, go ahead. Live question from the chat. Oh. Boring, 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 boring. <laughs> next, Don't worry, people. Next season, I'm, we're going to get a question air horn uh, in the soundboard here. <laughs> uh, Umicorn's asking what the font is. Yeah, it uh, looks like it's Barnard MT condensed bernard sorry i believe that's on adobe fonts barnard yes indeed bernard, uh, <laughs> yeah, bernard, MT bernard. Condensed. Yeah. yeah 
Um, yep. But yeah, all the fonts and stuff that you used are uh, that you'll see throughout this thing are, yep. are Adobe font fonts. Yep. Exactly. Everything in this project is from Adobe Stock in one way or another, except for the shot of the tomatoes and then the chip, and I guess the Glockulus <laughs> logo. Um, all right. So um, I'm not going to do this live because uh, it's largely just kind of clicking a button. But um, when you want to uh, track something into a shot that has movement. So remember, this clip has some actual movement to the camera here, OK? And so if we want to put 3D objects in here and have them feel like they belong, we need to emulate that camera movement. And so you can just come up here to Animation, Track Camera, OK? Um, I will point out something that is the reason that I'm not going to do it live. For one thing, I used the 4K version of this clip for the actual project, and so it's just heavier. But an interesting thing about this clip is that the room that we're actually in is one thing, and then you have all of these big windows showing you another <laughs> flat plane out there. Ooh, um, okay. yeah. yeah, and so if you find yourself in a case like this, what you actually might need to do is what I did, which is isolate the stuff that you want and isolate the stuff that you don't. So uh, in this case, I wanted to kind of get rid of um, all of that here. So. I fed something like this into the camera solver. I probably kept the, the middle here. Um, oops. Oh, Lord. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is not uncommon. Anytime you're tracking or doing anything like this, there may be times that you need to modify your clip so that you're kind of being smarter than the computer here. And then this way, it's not seeing that other stuff that might confuse the track, right? Yeah, because it's um, those it's those reflections, right, in the in yeah. the window, like competing, like ghosts. <laughs> ghosts ruin tracking. I'm just gonna say that out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this is the um, fact about ghosts, people need to be aware of. <laughs> Uh, a lot of times, you know, maybe you would need to adjust these masks over time or something, but that could be very basic. It doesn't need to be pretty. It just has to do enough to tell the tracking to not look out the window, basically, right? Um, and so once you've run that, you end up with a 3D solved camera, and then you can create some little, um, I like to create little solids and just kind of confirm that uh, everything is indeed in the right spot. I try to place a couple of them and kind of move them around the room in different places. So you can really feel like, does that feel, do each of these spots feel like they actually are sticking pretty well? Mm. Um, and in this case, I thought, uh, yeah, pretty much. So if I were to say, make my stuff layer 3D here, um, let's maybe go ahead and just parent this to one of these things back here. You can kind of blow this up nice and big. A classic and, shift shift parenting maneuver here. Uh-huh. And then, boop, there we go. We can see that it is, in fact, behind her, and it's sticking to the room pretty well. Um, so this is the basis of the rest of the shot. Um, but let's go ahead and maybe uh, see, see some of that chip maneuver um, so that we can actually sort of work with, you know, a real thing in here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, all right. So uh, I'm going to take a second and open up a couple of the Substance apps. Right. So yeah, well, while Kyle's doing that, you know, we're, we're going to enjoy, enjoy some loading. So Substance um, doesn't, doesn't come with your, with most Adobe um, uh, sort of uh, uh, subscriptions. Uh, it's like an aside, right? This is, um, mm -hmm. it's an add-on. It's, it's an addition to. Yeah, it's it's another company that was acquired by Adobe a couple years ago as part of kind of rounding out this uh, 3D pipeline, um, and so uh, it is it is separate from your the rest of your Creative Cloud um, subscription. But if you're into doing 3D stuff, uh, Substance has some really cool stuff. Um, the uh, I'm not I'm not going to be doing it today, but the um, texturing app you can literally uh, painter. Um, you can literally just paint on 3D objects and sort of, you know, spin them around in your virtual hand while you're uh, painting mm -hmm. on them. It's pretty cool. Um, and then you're going to see here, you can kind of like clay sculpt stuff mm -hmm. um, right here in the modeling app. Right. And before um, you're too far down the road, we do yeah. have another real, real question coming from the chat. Um, 
if the track is slipping or if the focal length mm -hmm. doesn't look correct, how can we correct the track? So it might, might be worth checking out like the error uh, error number when you mm -hmm. um, when you when you do things because that'll say I don't know what's the error number on this one. Well, uh, so like I said, uh, I actually tracked a pre comp in this yeah. particular case. Um, but if you start looking into this, you'll see uh, 1.16 pixels was the error here. Okay, which is, I don't know, when we're getting into like two, I find that that is high enough to cause mm -hmm. slipping. But yeah, like removing the extemporaneous points, you can manually delete um, points that are not help, helpful to the solve as yeah. well. And um, I guess I should I should show that part real quick um, maybe. since I Could, kind of skipped past it. Yeah. yeah. But like any points um, that are like on her, for example, might not be helpful because she's exactly. moving. And I think I actually, let's see. Um, okay. I took her out of it too. Oh. Um, so you can see I, I got rid of the windows and I got rid of her because she's moving and we don't want it to think about her. So it's really just looking at the wall and the couch. So honestly, it's not a ton of information in this shot. So I, I think it worked out pretty well considering. Yeah. And so I guess the, the short answer to the question is how do we correct the track? We want to correct the data as much as possible Yeah. before we say, you know, we're happy with this. So it's all about feeding in because... And there's the detailed analysis, right? You can increase the number of points that are being propagated mm -hmm. in the world. Um, but in in terms of like, you know, you you already say make the camera. Well, you've kind of already committed to making it based off of maybe a tainted data set. Um, yeah. It's like uh, it's like Kyle, you know, if we're making the salsa and uh, you know <laughs> someone comes around and they drop like a bunch of vanilla in there, you know. Or, mm, yeah, um, that's no good. Or if you're making it with tomatoes and you haven't you haven't correctly brined them in order to extract. You know the what? I will moisture. say, <laughs> if, if you if you put bad tomatoes in your salsa, you're gonna have bad salsa. Yeah, that's so. How it it's is. only as in, it's only as good as the ingredients you you feed it. Yeah. Um, there will be times where you just have to kind of do this manually, but. Um, let, let me show this part for the folks, uh, who aren't familiar with this. So after you run that, that camera solve that I said, animation track camera, it's honestly, it's just a little bar that goes across the screen and you don't have to interact with it too much. And then you get this thing that sits on here, like an effect, because it effectively is. Um, but on your clip, you'll have all these little multicolored dots. Okay. And those are going to follow things in your clip, ideally. Um, and so what you do is you use your selection tool and you can just kind of drag a little box in here and kind of find a target um, that you that is what you want. Mm. And then if you're happy with that and it feels like one of the planes that you actually want, then you right click and you can create a camera and some text or a solid or a null or shadow catchers even, um, you know, kind of whatever you want in here. And uh, I've already done that step. So I have a camera and it created a null. And then I created some others and manually moved them to other spots in the scene. So I could kind of check that further and make sure that I liked the track. Hmm. Oh, okay, good. Well, now, yep. now I've also, I'm sharing my salsa tips with the chat over here as well. Yeah, so yeah. I, I have been draining my, my tomatoes and then I use that juice uh, to flavor some rice that I make for, you know, whatever the salsa is going with the next day. Boom. There you go. Oops. <laughs> All right. So life hacks. You learn a lot on this show. <laughs> yeah, people, really. People don't know how useful this is. So this is substance. Here we are. Yeah. We've got the, so, the mystery cube in front of us. This is substance modeler. So uh, a lot of those, a lot of those uh, things you saw here, um, they are on just on Adobe stock. Okay. I just pulled right. all of these and just kind of like did a little bit of prep to them and, mostly didn't touch them. Uh, however, I could not find chips. And, you know, if you have a phrase dip it, which I felt like we really needed to do, we needed to see we're experiencing what she's experiencing here, right? Like this is some kind of dip mini game where you have to grab the chip and then you can dip it. Right. Um, so we needed a chip. And as you can kind of see by this one that floats here, like, you know, you don't just want hard triangles. Like you need a little bit of variation there. Mm -hmm. So, um, over here in Substance Modeler, you start off with a cube by default and you can, you know, just grab sides and do what you want there. 
But I was like, okay, well, let's start with a triangle. So uh, over here in the primitives, I'm just going to grab an n-gon, which is you know a polygon with some amount of sides you decide. Um, we'll set that down to three, and then we'll just kind of squish this down until it's almost flat, but not quite. Okay, need a little need a little bit of crunch, right? Um, and once you're happy with your primitive shape, I'm going to click this thing apply right here and just kind of bake that down. And then from there, it's just kind of doing, you know, what you want to do with it. Um, there are warp tools and smoothing tools and build ups. Uh, let's try the build up and maybe make a couple of uh, bubbles. So you can see my brush is quite large right here, but I'm just going to hold down control and uh, move drag left here and that'll make mm -hmm. it smaller. So um, I can kind of start building up some bubbles on the edges here. Um, or you could uh, be cutting away as well over here and kind of create, uh, bring that down as well. Um, you can kind of create like ridges and creases. Um, this is really all just kind of playing around with it until you're happy. Let's make kind of some bubbly edges here. Mm. Um, yeah. Honestly, uh, you know, if you if you feel like doing this stuff, just, just kind of play around with it. Um, I'm not gonna be too precious with this right now. We'll say this is, you know, this is my chip. We got some little bubbles from it being fried here. Um, and then maybe grab this smoothing tool just to kind of smooth out. Oops, that was pretty big. Bring that down and just kind of smooth out some of these edges a little bit to kind of emulate the way things get kind of rounded off, right? We don't right. want those too sharp. You don't want to cut people's mouth here. <laughs> True. But, and you can kind of get that. Um uh what is it it's like pol it's polygon kind of tearing right where the where the quads and the triangles they should be smoothing but they're kind of like mm -hmm. getting getting crispified so you gotta give, give them a little give them a yeah. brush treatment whoosh 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 yeah and a lot of this uh i am using a pen tablet right now um so you can have this stuff be like pressure sensitive um a lot of this is just kind of like being mindful of the strength of your tool um, I'm certainly not an expert at this kind of stuff, but I can make a tortilla chip. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you can too. That's true. Um, and if you look closely <laughs> at the tortilla chips that you, that you will find, you'll notice they are in fact, uh, being cut from a large circle of, uh, of tortilla. So it's, uh -huh. they, they, it's actually how one becomes the other. Uh, I think that someone on TikTok found that out and it exploded their brains, uh, when they, <laughs> they assembled six tortilla chips in a circle and, uh, you know, completed the Lammershanks, uh, configuration <laughs> anyway. So <laughs> things are getting nice and varied, right? Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll say that we're happy with this. Uh, my real chip did, you know, I did spend a, a few more minutes on it, but let's say that we're happy with this one here. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a modeler thing. Well, I'll call this new chip. Um, so this is a modeler scene. But then <clears throat> to bring it into some of the other apps, it's going to be easier to um, actually export this as a 3D file type. Um, okay. Some of the Substance apps could take this model as is, and some of them cannot. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'm going to use this GLB format that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to fuss about the settings too much, but you know, if this is a real thing, you probably should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we got a question. Is this like ZBrush, ZBrush? Indeed. This is, uh, Very much. this is like a competitor to uh, ZBrush, ZBrush. Yep. Um, and I want to, before it rolls on past the chat, I want to shout out to David Hamilton, who is the current leader in puns, virtual reality yep. and salsa dipping are both all about immersion yeah so just uh, take that with you as you uh, go into the world today <laughs> and and to to really get meta about this you could absolutely be using this app right here with a vr headset to model this chip in full immersive vr <laughs> finally if you're so inclined right yeah. <laughs> um okay so uh you know if you were being precious with this uh you might make some other stops but in this case I already have a texture that I'm pretty happy with. And so I'm just going to take this model and apply that texture to it and move on. Okay. Um, but like the painter app is really neat. Like I said, you can, you know, paint directly onto the 3D model and kind of spin it around as you work. Um, very cool. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you the other chip that I made here. And then we'll bring in the one I just modeled. Mm, some pre-baked uh, chips yeah, here yeah, that are already. Yeah. 
it is pre-fried. Yep. Also, you you will know if you are at a good uh, taco or burrito truck, uh, depending on the uniformity of their uh, tortilla chips. So just a heads up on that one. So uh, less uniformity is is probably better. C. I think. Yes. Yeah. You, you're looking yeah. for something that they make in house. It comes in a greasy paper bag that becomes uh, see-through the more you hold it. Um, that's how you know. Uh, white corn. So, Kyle, what do we got going on here? Yeah, well, so this is this is the chip that you actually saw in the project. Uh, so you can see, I, you know, I spent a little more time getting some bubbles and some nice thin edges and all that here. Mm. Um, and then there's a tortilla chip texture that I got from the Substance Library, which is effectively the same as Adobe Stock. Um, and just applied to my chip. But uh, we want to kind of prove that I'm not, um, you know, making anything up here. So I'm going to go to open and choose models and grab that new chip right here. And um, it can take just a second to kind of show you a little preview. I'm going to go ahead and close modeler because we don't need that uh, processing being eaten up here. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go ahead and open. I'm going to not save this other thing I have. And then, uh, yeah, I don't need any of that. Again, if you're doing this for a real project, um, oops, uh, please do be a little more uh, careful about these things. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can do it this way. And uh, Kevin is complimenting your burn bubble in the middle of the of the chip. This this is the attention yeah. to detail that we bring right. to these shows. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for some reason, this one's being a little temperamental. Um, which, you know, happens anytime that you're doing something live. Um, <laughs> let's let's just give it a second shot here. Okay, well, it doesn't want to import that one, so I, I may have to use my existing chip here. Right. Um, let's see if I can just bring the, uh, well, there we go. Ooh. Okay, well, here we go. There's, there's my model that I made before. Um, and let's see if it will do that for us. There we go. There we go. Look at that beautiful thing here. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to find that uh, chip texture again, but uh, if you scroll down here on the side of your assets, you'll just start getting to your asset library. And you have all of these materials. You have environment lights. You can do all kinds of stuff in here. Um, this stager is kind of made to do like, you know, uh, arrangement of 3D objects in space, but it's also just great for prepping these things to go to After Effects. So um, I'm just going to find a texture that looks kind of interesting and sort of chippy. Um, this looks like kind of like a rough wood texture, but let's see if that's sort of close enough. I'm going to say that's good for now and different. So you can tell I'm not just cheating. Um, <laughs> it, it, these are wooden, wooden chips here. Oh boy. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is when they talk about a domestic uh, chip processing problem, you know, this is what yeah. we're talking about. Increasing the domestic <laughs> supply of chips. This is it. Um, I like how the bubble is being treated. <laughs> I do too. I do too. It's great. Um, should we make this out of stone instead? Ooh, stone chips. Stone ground. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Um, that that looks delectable, folks. I don't know about you. Um, let's, I don't know. Let's see. Um, Boy, that, that one's a little too intense. <laughs> there we go. That that looks pretty good. Honestly, oh, that sort yeah. of looks like it might be covered with cinnamon or something, which Ooh. sounds good. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna call this good here. Again, <clears throat> you have sort of a stager document that you can save, um, and then you can also just export the model itself, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, and most of the time that I've downloaded the stock models, I'm just opening them in stager. And let's say like the tomato that I got. Um, it might give you a full tomato and a sliced and half tomato in the same file. And so mm. I'll just bring it in here and sort of, you know, selectively turn things on and off and save those out as tomato full, tomato half. Right. And you really want to like get them onto this zero, like, yes, you know, where zero mm -hmm. is on the axis here. Yeah. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to kind of make sure that's selected over there and say export selected. And then we'll call this, uh, we'll set this to GLB and call this, you know, new chip. And I will just save that out. It should take just a second here. And then we can import that into After Effects. And hopefully everything will be nice and 
I would say smooth, but we want it to be crunchy here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Very textured. So let's, come over to, <laughs> let's come over here to After Effects. And I'm just going to drag this in. Uh, you can import it through, you know, whatever method makes you happy. And you'll see there's a little, little GLB. And again, just in case you joined us late, I am in the beta right now. This doesn't work in the current release version quite yet. Right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I, I just saw a question pop up from Joel. As a motion yeah. designer, how often am I using the Substance apps? Um, honestly, a fair amount now. Um, mm. I'm not a huge 3D person, but I've kind of always been the person that like... Um, you know, the, there's a tool called Element 3D that we've had for something like 10 years now. And it's really good at having an object come in and then you can, you know, spin that thing around like this and have a little bit of animation on it maybe. And right. I think that's very much what this workflow speaks to. And as you've seen, you know, I have a bunch of things that don't have internal animation in themselves, but you can animate them within After Effects in, you know, using whatever tools you're already familiar with. Um, and I found that to be very helpful in my workflow. So mm -hmm. pretty often so far. And like, I don't know, comparing that to like, well, you know, would you require in order to do a lot of the things that Substance does, you would need something like all of Cinema 4D, right? Or at least mm -hmm. a license to that. Um, yeah. Because there are things in C4D Lite that, you know, especially when it comes to the UVW. The modeling and stuff. Yes, that, that yeah. we can't do even if we're manipulating something that is already half halfway to what we want you know mm -hmm. it's it's just enough to kind of get you there i don't know i personally i don't i don't touch it but that's because uh, i've been sitting on a, a c4d license for a long time yeah that, uh, that does <clears throat> does enough for me uh sure yeah anyway I've, it's... I've made an intentional you know uh i've been giving myself reasons to explore the substance apps um mm -hmm. to kind of like feel how much I can use them in my normal workflow. Um, and, you know, I'm comfortable enough to make a tortilla chip. So <laughs> there's that. Yeah, yeah. And who's who's making things out of whole, whole cloth all the time anyway? I, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, not me. It's a rare um, bird. Um, okay, so, so we're going to go ahead and just bring this directly into a composition. And when you import it in, you get to kind of see it here in your comp and then you also get this little pop-up so you can do things like set the object scale as you bring it in because maybe you realize like oh i made i actually modeled this thing really small or really big and so you can kind of set the overall scale of this thing as you're importing it okay Whoa. let's kind of pick something about like this right um but you know what that's close enough to 100 i'm just going to leave it there right um, you can also if this was something that was supposed to fill the whole scene there's a button right here to make it comp sized um, and then you have some other things here, whether this affects your position, um, you can kind of choose your units and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Again, get deeper in this if you want to. Yeah. And a lot of like, how big should it be is determined by what the camera solve thinks the yep. world size is. Absolutely. Yep. Like right I... now, this is at zero on Z, but when we put it back here with some of these, uh, little plates here, those are at you know, 12,000 on Z. So uh, when I actually, if I put it back there, it's going to look pretty small by comparison. Yeah. And yeah, David says now it's time to make them do the salsa dance. So remember, it's one, two, three, exactly. five, five, six, seven. So do you, you're, is that how it works? That's right. You're pausing on the okay. fours and eights, uh, having just recently gone back to uh, salsa dancing lessons. Uh, it's uh, It's all coming back to me. That's right. <laughs> I contain multitudes. So Kyle, let's get these things yeah. orbiting. Well, uh, as you see here, I've got uh, the little 3D gizmo, so I can spin this around and do whatever I want with it, which is yeah. great. Um, so I think really what you need to do for this kind of little array that I built here, um, you may recall a few weeks ago, we did one specifically on making radial arrays, right? Yeah. Um, if you missed that episode, you can go back and find it. Uh, radial Array Rodeo, I believe it was called. <laughs> That's right. MotionDesignHotline.com. Um, See all of our previous episodes. <laughs> uh, so as you're as you're pushing that into position, you know, address uh -huh. some address some quandaries in the chat. Uh, Please do. So is it worth the extra cost, even if you have a Maxon uh, subscription? 
I know a lot of people get a lot that's of value. You. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> worth. Oh boy, that's a tough one. A lot yeah. of people get a lot of um a lot of play out of the like painting and texturing of it. Mm-hmm. That they they find that to be the superior way to do it. Um so that might be it's really an ease of use and is this actually gelling? Because uh, a lot of the things a lot of things that you can do in the substance apps you can also do, but yeah, the, the third party, like actual texturing and handling of the UVWs and stuff, like that's such an ease of use thing. It's got to feel good to do it or it's going to take you so much more time yeah. to do. Anyway, um, the other one is, can you animate your textures in After Effects like we do with Element? Unfortunately and, not. Yeah, at this time, nope. Um, yeah. But uh, hey, who knows? Who knows what the future holds? It's in beta who right knows? now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. This is all still in beta. Um, so I, I think we're going to continue to see a lot of development on this as it goes. Yeah. Um, this is uh, as uh, nascent as like the first time there were shape layers. Right. And then, oh, and, <laughs> yeah. and then here comes a repeater and then here comes all these other, you know, things that live within it. Um, mm-hmm. So anyway, what do I'm, we get? I'm not going to make any promises for anyone, uh, but I have made that exact request to the After Effects team. And uh, I believe I saw some of them say like, yes, that would be an excellent thing but to, to have in there. So um, hopefully someday. Yeah, um, yeah. Submitted in the user requests, upvote, 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 and uh, we'll, we'll get it in there someday. You know, hopefully. You know, who knows? Who knows what, like I say, uh-huh. we never know what's happening in the future. So you got four, four chippos in there. I do, yeah. I just kind of made a, a little quick rig here so that I can orbit four chips around her, all right? Okay. And you'll see I kind of offset it a little bit so that we, um, you know, we get a little bit of perspective on the thing. Mm-hmm. Now, right now, this isn't going to look very good because it's way too close to the camera, right? So we need to think about where our actual like points are. One thing about these camera tracks is that they tend to put things like pretty far away from you. These are all down mm-hmm. at like 12,000. So I think the easiest thing to do is to take this null and parent it, shift parent it to one of these so it moves it to that location. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and unparent it, but that way it's kind of where it needs to be um, at least as a start and we'll kind of see how this feels. So let's do a quick preview and hey, that feels pretty good, right? Um, <laughs> yep. You know, we could start adjusting from here, but like that feels like it's in the right ballpark. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could probably turn off my little reference squares here. Um, I might move this a bit closer to us because we kind of want the her to be the orbit point, right? Yeah. So let's kind of put it like that and see how it feels. Okay, that feels, uh, you know, I think pretty good. Um, let's maybe kind of bring this up here. So ultimately what we want is a little bit of rotation. Um, let's just kind of do it like this. I don't know how well this is going to work when I'm doing it, uh, you know, quickly like this. True. And I was going to say, oh, not to rush you, Kyle. We got like, we got like two or three minutes left on the clock. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I did not pay close enough attention yeah. at the time. Well, I, I mean, honestly, I think we got pretty much the basic idea going on here. Uh, from here, you just kind of need to be mindful of layering and, um, you know, make sure that the chips that need to go behind her can. Um, mm-hmm. You can still, you know, um, you should be able to put things specifically behind her. I didn't label these very well. So um, there you go. You see that one disappears behind her while the other ones are still in front. And that's <laughs> effectively what that other shot is. It's just uh, more chips, right? Right. Yeah, so, and the other thing, I guess, to keep in mind, you'll see that that, that like, 3D box, like, breaks, right? Um, and that that just means that, you know, they're not really together, but they're still respecting the same 3D universe, even though there is a 2D thing kind of in between mm-hmm. them. Uh, and a yes. question, question from Joel, uh, can you project her on a card to deal with the front and behind? I'm so, sure you could. I'm trying to think. I don't need her the behind of her though. Oh yeah, it's true. In this case. Yeah. Like if I think if it was a more complex, like longer, like if you had chips yeah. that would go from behind to in front, mm-hmm. um, then you would definitely want to make her sort of three dimensional and also in at the right Z place 
But yeah. then, then you get into the weird parallax thing because she's shifting perspective as she's moving through. And you would need the card that she's projected on to also respect her movements toward and away <laughs> as she jabs with her hand towards the camera. Uh, long story I, I will, short. Can I, if I can real, real quickly point out, because uh, Joel mentioned this, and you kind of were talking about around this too, the 3D yep. binning, this is kind yep. of newer, but these little icons here do indicate um, like when you have something that kind of breaks your your 3D flow, if you want to call it that, uh, like when you put a 2D layer in between 3D layers, yeah. um, you know, uh, so just kind of be mindful of that because you do have that indicator now of when things kind of break your, your 3D world flow. And speaking of breaking flow, Kyle, that's going to bring <laughs> us to the end, of the end of the program here. So I hope uh, people enjoy this. I love seeing this stuff. Uh, I don't open substance a lot myself, so it is uh, always good to see what you're doing in there. Um, some news while we're here. We're going to be back at you uh, in the new year with uh, more episodes in January and February. But I think mm -hmm. for the rest of this month, we're going to be hanging out with you on Mondays. So you'll you'll get to enjoy the pirate feed of Motion Design Hotline. <laughs> so look forward to that. Keep sending us your questions. Uh, MotionDesignHotline.com. Use the forum. You can get at me at EC Abrams all over the internet. Kyle, you can find Kyle at Kyleosaurus rex kyle delicious as always uh to have you here uh of so, course uh, same always yeah. always great to do the show and uh if you want to dig into project files i don't know if i can post anything from today necessarily but all of our old shows and the project files are on there motiondesignhotline.com so uh go play with stuff and make some neat things with our ideas <laughs> absolutely all right everybody so until we see you again stay creative be kind to each other uh uh, what is it? Bienvenidos. And uh, we'll that, see you. That, all those things. Yeah. See you down the road. All right. Bye for now. Make some tasty salsa. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs>